This is my toy hauler. Just like a conventional toy hauler, it's designed to haul toys and have some living space different than a conventional toy hauler. This one is about 90% garage and 10% amenities. Just like the toy hauler, the RV, or your retrofitted van, it has a house battery to power lights, heater, and other outlets and things inside the trailer. And the house battery can be charged from the shore. The line that's plugged in here, called shore power, comes from the 120 volt source off the grid, goes in through a converter charger hooked to the house battery that allows the trailer to function both while plugged in and um, then later from the battery after it's not plugged in. So it can use the shore power as it's, as it's live and then the battery later. So the good news is that the battery can be charged and then when the trailer is taken out, you're good to go for a while. The bad news is that if you're on the road for a while and you don't have a generator with you, there's really no good way to charge that battery while you're on the move. So the goal is to install a DC to DC charger that will solve that problem. Let's look at a schematic for a minute. We have our tow vehicle on the left and our trailer on the right. The tow vehicle has a battery. This is a high cold cranking amps battery designed to run a starter, not necessarily designed to run low draw, uh, long time types of draws like inside of a trailer. That battery is wired to ground, which is the chassis in a tow vehicle. And the vehicle has an alternator that keeps the battery charged. The tow vehicle also has a seven prong plug uh, one of which goes directly to one of the wires on the seven prong plug goes to ground. One goes um, basically directly to the battery. There is a fuse in there, but it's used for aux auxiliary power in the trailer and it's always charged. It always has voltage. And then there are other wires for uh, your park lamps and uh, turn signals and uh, brakes and things like that. We're not concerned with those at the moment. The trailer also has a battery. It's a different kind of battery. It's a deep cycle battery. Your van or your RV or your motorhome would all be the same. In some cases, there are multiple batteries, sometimes a pair of six volts wired in series, sometimes some 12 volts wired in parallel. But most systems today are 12 volt systems. That battery is also wired to ground. That is the chassis of the trailer. The trailer then has a lead that allows it to be plugged into the tow vehicle, again, mostly for marker lights and brakes and the like, but other types of things can be, uh, can be facilitated through that same connection. So option A, if we connect the wire that comes from the tow vehicle battery through the connector into the lead for the trailer directly to the battery of the trailer, Will that work? Well, the answer is kind of, but not really. The problems are that number one, that's a very low amperage supply. So while it might charge, it would be a trickle charge at best, uh, especially given the length of that wire. There is a little bit of a voltage reduction based on how far that voltage has to travel on a small wire. So maybe a very slow trickle charge. There is an overload danger by having those two things connected directly. If there is a large draw on this 12 volt battery and its voltage is insufficient to cover the draw, then the draw will go across this wire looking for its help from the starter battery in the vehicle. And if the load is bigger than what that small wire can handle, the wire can heat up, uh, burn, uh, even catch on fire. And so there's an overload danger there that we need to avoid. Finally, there's a tow vehicle discharge problem. Since these two things are always connected, as long as the trailer is plugged into the tow vehicle, the items inside the trailer, your lights, your TV, your radio, anything else that's running and drawing voltage inside the trailer, can also draw from the starter battery, which means not only might you have a dead battery in the trailer, but then when it's time to leave, you might not be able to start the car. So that's definitely suboptimal. 
Let's look at option number two. Same configuration, we still have the alternator and the battery and everything else. These things are all pretty standard across the board. So let's take a different approach. Let's look at some connector on the back of the tow vehicle that can then be wired into the battery and alternator, recognizing that's really the same thing, through a fuse and then also connected to ground. The same thing on the trailer, a similar connector wired into the battery and to ground, and then let's connect the two. How about that approach? Well, yeah, that, that kind of works too, but it also has some problems. Number one is that we are in a constant charge situation with a fairly high charge capacity. A typical vehicle alternator probably produces in the neighborhood of 60 amps, sometimes higher, uh, depending on what the vehicle is designed for. A sedans might be less, a, a heavy duty pickup truck might be more. Nonetheless, we're pumping some fairly high amperage across this wire into this battery, regardless of whether it's being used or not. Now, in contrast, the starter battery in the tow vehicle is always being drawn from everything in the car, the dash, the power seats, the air conditioning, uh, everything that's running in the car, uh, somehow, in some form or fashion, uses voltage from this system. And so the battery is being used when the alternator is running on the tow vehicle side. On the trailer side, that's not necessarily the case. Since that battery might just be sitting idle and vacant, having a constant charge with high amperage is, um, is, is not good for the battery. Modern chargers have mechanisms to avoid that problem where they go into trickle mode or even turn off at points when the battery has reached full full capacity. So we really don't want a constant charge. That's not good for the battery. Secondly, we have the same problem as the low amperage line, the small wire coming across the trailer connection, where these two things are now constantly connected. So if I run the house battery down, I am also likely to run the charger battery down. And when it's time to leave, my car won't start. Again, suboptimal. Let's look at the third option. This is where the DC to DC battery charger comes in. Much like a conventional battery charger that runs on 120, it controls what type of voltage, how much amperage goes into the battery that it's charging. So if we now connect these relatively large wires, these would be eight gauge, to the battery charger, DC to DC battery charger in, then connect wires on the out, the feed side to the battery and ground. Now we have a control mechanism that gives us the best of all worlds. We can charge from the house battery, but have a control that disallows drawing current from the charger battery, uh, sorry, the starter battery, when we're using the trailer. Now there is one trick. Typically this configuration involves a switch that is tied into the ignition on the vehicle. In a van, that's fairly simple since you're all in one container. We run a wire from the from an ignition switch over here in this green panel on this example, and that tells the DC to DC battery charger that the alternator is running, or at least that the vehicle is on, and gives it permission to draw voltage. Otherwise, if that's not on, then the charger doesn't, doesn't supply voltage to the house battery. I don't really have that luxury, and although I suppose I could run yet another little tiny wire across, that's not quite the way I want it to work anyway. Some people will wire into the marker lights of the vehicle so that when the lights are turned on, then that also turns on the DC to DC charger, which is um, interesting and a possibility, it provides a possibility for for draining the battery when we don't want to if we leave the lights on while we're parked. Um, and, and so the control isn't quite there. Some people will wire a manual, like a hardwired switch into the trailer that just simply provides voltage to that whenever they want to be able to draw from the tow vehicle. That gives a lot of flexibility, but it's kind of manual. I'm going to shoot for a third option, which is hopefully best of both worlds. If we put a voltage cutoff switch in line with this system wired into the auxiliary power of the vehicle, 
and then into the ignition switch on the DC to DC battery charger, I can measure how much voltage is coming from the tow vehicle and based on that voltage control whether I want the DC battery charger to be able to draw from the system and charge the house battery. This works because a car or a tow vehicle with a 12 volt system typically has about 12 volts DC when the vehicle is not running. Once the vehicle is started and the alternator spins, the voltage in that system goes up to somewhere in the neighborhood of 14 volts DC. So if the voltage cutoff is set to about 13 volts, then when the car is not running, the battery charger will not function. When the car is started and we exceed the 13 volts, the battery charger turns on, house battery is able to be charged from the alternator while avoiding drawing from the tow vehicle when it shouldn't. That's the plan. That's all for today. Thanks for joining me. In our next episode, we'll put all these pieces together. See you then.